Hello listeners, and welcome back to Sandman Stories Presents. Today we have two more stories from the Azores, written down by Elsie Spicer Eels. In the first story, a hard-working man is twice tricked by an innkeeper. Will he be tricked a third time? And in the second story, a young Antonia gets a gig in the king's palace and dresses like a boy to qualify for the job. She is so sweet that the king's sister falls in love with her and puts her through some tough tasks just for not returning the love. Okay, let's begin. The Table, the Sifter, and the Pinchers The Story of the King's Laborer and His Wages Once upon a time there was a man who was very poor. He had so many children it was difficult to earn enough money to provide for them at all. Accordingly, he left home and hired out to the king of a distant land. At the end of a year's time, he went to the king and said, I have served you faithfully for a whole year. Now I wish to return to my wife and children. Pay me, I pray you, what you owe me for my work. The king said, I will not reward you in money. I will give you something better than money. Here is a table. When you are hungry, all you have to do is say, Table, set yourself then the table will immediately be spread with food. Thank you, good king, replied the man. With this table, it will be easy enough to provide food, even for all my large family. When the man had started home with his table, he soon grew hungry. He put it down by the roadside, under a leafy tree, and said, Table, set yourself. Immediately it was full of the most delicious food. The man ate all he could and gave the rest away to some beggars who passed that way. It is a lucky day for us, said the beggars, as they thanked him. That night the man stopped at an inn. He was so delighted with the magic powers of his table that he foolishly told the innkeeper about it. That would be a most excellent table for me to possess, thought the innkeeper. With this in my possession, I would soon be a rich man. I could charge my guests a price in portion to the rich food I would serve them, and I'd never have to spend a cent of my money to buy supplies. That night the innkeeper stole the table and substituted another one for it, which looked exactly like it. Early in the morning the man loaded the table on his back and hurried home to his wife and children. We will never be hungry again, he cried as he embraced his wife. Never again shall our children call for food when we have nothing to give them. How much did the king pay you, asked his wife in surprise. The good woman knew well how much it cost to buy enough food to keep all their children from going hungry. The king did not pay me in money. He gave me something better than money, replied the man. Do you see this table? Call the children. I want to show you something. The man's wife and children all gathered about the table, curiously watching it. Table, set yourself, said the man. The table remained standing in the center of the floor, just as it was. What trick is this? asked the good wife. She had been a bit suspicious from the moment she had heard there was no money in her husband's pockets. I'll get the beggars I fed to prove to you what this table provided yesterday, he said when he had told all the story. You'd better go back to the king as fast as you can, advised the wife. Take back this good-for-nothing table which he has imposed upon you, and ask for some real money instead. The man did as his wife advised. The king was thoughtful for a moment. He guessed that the man had been robbed. At last he said... I'll give you a sifter this time. Then, when you need money, all you have to say is, Sifter, sift. It will sift out money as freely as if it were flour. The man was delighted with the sifter. He sifted his pockets full of money and immediately hurried home. On the way, he again spent the night at the inn. When I brought my table home, it wouldn't work, he told the innkeeper. I took it back and got something in its place which is all right. The innkeeper watched him sift out money. Why don't I get that sifter, thought the innkeeper. I work very hard serving my guests, even though the table provides the food for them. If I had this sifter, I wouldn't have to work. I'd close the inn and pass the rest of my life, enjoying the money I'd sift into my pockets so easily. That night he stole the sifter and substituted another, which looked exactly like it. When the man reached home, there was plenty of money in his pockets, and his wife and children were happy for a little while. However, he soon wanted to display the magic gifts of his new sifter. Accordingly, he gathered his family together. Sifter, sift, he commanded. The sifter behaved just like any ordinary sifter. You have been tricked again, cried his wife. 
She was very cross indeed and told her husband exactly what she thought of him. Home was not a comfortable place for him to be that day, so he decided to hurry back to the king after he'd emptied all his money in his pockets into his wife's lap. This will supply you for a while, he said. It is quite as much as any ordinary husband would have brought home for a year's work. A woman hates to have her husband made a fool of, replied the woman as she rolled up the money and tucked it away carefully. When the king had heard the story, he was entirely convinced that the man had an enemy who had stolen both the table and the sifter. Where did you spend the night? he asked. The man told of passing the night in the inn. I heard that that innkeeper is going to retire from business. He has become so rich, said the king. You'd better hurry down there as fast as you can before he leaves town. The laborer nodded his head thoughtfully, a wise look creeping across his eyes. Take these pinchers, ordered the king. Use them on that innkeeper until he gives you back the table and the sifter. When the innkeeper was sore and black and blue from the pinchers, he gave back the table and the sifter. After that, they were prosperous days indeed for the king's laborer. Whenever the children were hungry, he would say, Table, set yourself. And immediately the table would be full of the most delicious food. Whenever his wife said, I need some money, he would call out, Sifter, sift and the sifter would sift out money as freely and easily as if it were flour. As for the pinchers, they proved to be quite useful as the other gifts he received from the king. Whenever the children were naughty, he had only to glance in the direction of those pinchers. The children would immediately behave as they should. The End no, I, I liked the, the part where the wife was like, you know, it's not even about the money. I don't like you being made a fool of. And I can really relate to that because my wife does a really good job of, you know, not, not just taking care of our money, but also, like, looking out for me, really making sure I'm not played for a fool, which sometimes it's pretty easy to fool me. All right. Story number two, St. Anthony's Godchild. The story of Antonia, who became a king's page. Long ago, there lived a man who had so many children that he could scarcely find godfathers for them all. He had requested so many of his friends to serve that when his last baby was born, a little dark-eyed daughter, he vowed that he'd ask upon the first man he met upon the street. As luck would have it, he happened to meet good St. Anthony. Will you be godfather to my baby daughter, he asked. Kind St. Anthony gladly consented. He named the baby Antonia and said to the father, Train up this child in the way she should go. Teach her all you can. When she is eighteen years old, I'll come and get her, and give her a good start in life. The years flew by, and soon little Antonia was eighteen years old. The father was afraid that St. Anthony had forgotten his promise, but one day the saint appeared. Is this my godchild? he asked, as he looked at Antonia. Surely she has grown prettier each year of her life. Antonia blushed shyly and looked even more attractive than before. Dress in your brother's garments, he said. I'm going to take you to the king's court, and you are entirely too pretty to go there in your own dresses. Accordingly, Antonia put on her brother's clothes and went to serve as a page to the king. She was now called Anthony instead of Antonia. Now the king had a sister who grew very fond of the little page. She became angry that the page did not love her in return and plotted against him. One day she went to the king and said, your little page says that he can separate all the chaff from the wheat in a single night. Let him try, responded the king. When Anthony heard what the king required, he was decidedly worried. Then he remembered that he was the godchild of St. Anthony, and that the saint was always ready to aid those in need. He called upon St. Anthony to help him fulfill the king's command. In the morning, the king's wheat was entirely free from chaff. The king loved his little page more and more and the king's sister was angrier than before that she could not win the affection of the youth. She made a new plot against him. What do you suppose that page is saying now? she asked her brother. He boasts that he can go to the palace of the king of the Moors and steal the purse of gold pieces from beneath his pillow. The king sent Anthony to the palace of the king of the Moors. With St. Anthony's help, he climbed up the high wall of the palace and crept in through the window. The king of the Moors was so sound asleep that Anthony had no difficulty whatever in slipping his hand under the pillow and stealing the purse. Then he crept out again without awakening the king. That young page Anthony has grown so very boastful, remarked the king's sister a few days after his return. 
that he now claims that he can carry away the king of the Moors himself. Then she added, I'll marry him if he fulfills this boast. Bring home the king of the Moors as your captive, were the king's orders to Anthony. The page was very much worried that he thought that it would be more difficult to capture the king of the Moors than it had been to capture his purse. Not at all, dear godchild, said the kind St. Anthony when he heard about the king's new command. Anthony climbed quietly up the wall as before and crept in through the window. Then he rolled up the king of the Moors in the bedclothes and tossed him out of the window. By the time the king was really awakened from his sleep, he was in the boat ready to sail away. When Anthony returned to the palace with his captive, the king said, My best and bravest page, you are worthy indeed of any honor. You shall wed my sister. I can't marry her, said Anthony. My name's Antonia. In that case, said the king, I'll marry you myself. The End I really enjoyed the first story. Uh, I heard a Sicilian version of the story on food, folklore, and fairy tales hosted by Rachel M. I'll link the story named The Magic Cane, The Gold Donkey, and The Little Stick That Hits in the story notes. In the second story, Antonia is only 13, and so I added a few years to make it less creepy. I like how the missions didn't involve anyone getting hurt, but rather a gentle poke at a nearby culture. It is only fitting that the podcast shout-out is to folklore, food, and fairy tales. Rachel does a great job of finding cool stories that aren't the usual and giving them life. I could listen to her read books all day long. She also adds in food, and who can ask for more? And the listener shout-out is to San Antonio, Texas. See what I did there? The city of St. Anthony accounts for 16% of my listeners in Texas. The original peoples of the area were the Payaya people. They named the area Yanaguana, meaning refreshing waters. And on a personal note, I do believe my friend Mia lives there, so big shout out to Hyomes. Thank you, and good night.